Greetings, everybody. My name is Tommy the Keyblade Master, and welcome to my channel. I'm doing another Mega Man review today. This time, it's going to be Mega Man Zero Three. Now, I didn't like Mega Man Zero Two all that much. It had problems. Mainly, it was way too difficult, and even when you played through New Game Plus, you couldn't really buff Zero up all that much. So it's not one of the more enjoyable Mega Man games. Mega Man Zero 3 comes back at it though with a whole bunch of interesting tweaks to the system that make this game far more enjoyable to play than its first two predecessors. It's still hard. It's still going to be a game that you really have to fight uphill in order to win. But at the same time, it never seems overbearing and a lot of the tweaks really help the enjoyability of this game. Add in, it has one of the best narrative stories in a Mega Man game, and Mega Man Zero Three is a game that should not be missed. The story in Mega Man Zero Three picks up short time after Mega Man Zero Two. X has been destroyed, and the Dark Elf has been released, and Zero is out to find it and capture it again. However, a mysterious spaceship lands containing the evil Dr. Wheel and his new android Omega, and he's out to steal the Dark Elf and use it for his nefarious purposes. However, he has brought along the copy of Mega Man X, and through this copy he has managed to take control of the Neo-Arcadia government. So Zero and the Resistance are on a race to try to stop him and stop Neo-Arcadia from getting the Dark Elf. Adding to the list of Zero's problems, though, is Wheel seems to know the truth about him. Is he the real Mega Man Zero, or is he just a fake that people assume is the real Zero? You'll find out the answer to this at the end of the game, and it's not what you think. I just love the conclusion of this game. It really does do a good job tying up all the loose ends so far. I just wish it was the end of the series, but I'll get into that when I start talking about Mega Man Zero Four. Now let's talk about the graphics in this game for just a bit. Let me tell you something about Mega Man Zero Three. The way this game looks is just amazing. One of the best looking Game Boy Advance games in my opinion. Not only do you still have some of that cool artwork for the regular 2D graphics and some of the cool explosions and special effects that were in the first two games, but some of the cutscenes are just amazing. And take a look at this tracking shot that's done here. It looks almost like it's in 3D, and this was done on the Game Boy Advance, not the Nintendo DS. It's just so impressive looking. All in all, this game is one of the best looking games for the Game Boy Advance, and you just can't deny how pretty it is. Just like the graphics, the sound and music have also gotten a lot of love. You still have a lot of those sound effects and hardcore explosions from the first two Mega Man Zero games present in Zero Three, and they sound fine, and the soundtrack is also pretty rocking. Just like the other Mega Man Zero games, this one holds up the test of time. The only thing that holds it back is that it's on the Game Boy Advance's sound system. Other than that, it holds up to the test of time really well, and it's a real joy to listen to. Alright, let's talk about the gameplay in Mega Man Zero 3 and why I think it's so amazing. Like the first two Mega Man Zero games, it's still an action shooter with all the tropes. You're still going to be slashing through enemies, it's still going to be killing you quite often, and you're still going to be collecting and raising those cyber elves. What Mega Man Zero 3 does differently is the way it lets you rotate the gameplay just a little bit. If you don't want to have your butt kicked, you can elect to go into cyberspace for a lot of the stages. Now, when you enter the cyberspace world, all the cyber elves you've collected will automatically activate. You don't lose them for their activation, nor do you have to raise them to full health. They just activate with all their powers. Therefore, you can now truck through these stages a lot easier. Also, if you notice in these stages, there's some Mega Man Battle Network enemies in them. I do believe in order to get these, you have to link cable both of the games together in order for this to activate. Mega Man Battle Network 4 gets a zero card with a cool sword trick. We get these easy to beat enemies in our stages that usually drop power-ups. So it's kind of worth it to connect, but I don't think you can connect using the Virtual Console versions. This is something you have to have the actual Game Boy Advance and actual Game Boy Advance game in order to do, unfortunately. 
Still, it's a cool thing, and I just like the cyberspace idea. Of course, cyberspace isn't uh, available for all stages, nor all parts of the stages, but it will get you through a lot of the trickier areas, and I like that, and it's optional, and there's other things to find if you don't go into cyberspace. So it's an interesting idea to make the game easier for newcomers without, at the same time without it being a complete cakewalk. Another thing they've changed is that you can now collect a lot more power-ups. Beforehand, it was only the three element chips that you could really equip to zero. Here, there's a whole bunch of other things you can collect. You can get boots for double jumping. You can get items that allow you to heal your health just by standing still. It makes the game quite a bit easier and allows zero to be more customizable. Finally, the stages. You get a lot of great stages, but there's more to this than your standard beat eight bosses and then the final boss for the Mega Man formula. Here, after you beat the first four, you actually have to go back and beat some bosses that you encountered in the first game and fight Copy X again. However, the story doesn't end there. It's actually only the halfway point. You get more stages coming up after that, and the final boss is definitely an epic, epic showdown with three forms. And the last form, which I won't completely spoil for you, is a really epic fight that pits Zero against Omega in a really fascinating way. All in all, all I can say is the gameplay in Mega Man Zero Three is really solid. It's not an easy game to beat, but it keeps it from being impossible to beat like Mega Man Zero and Mega Man Zero Two and makes it accessible. That's what I like about this game. All in all, it's a perfectly polished gem, definitely worth picking up. I give Mega Man Zero Three for the Game Boy Advance a 5 out of 5. Definitely worth picking up on the Wii U Virtual Console. You would be a fool to miss it. It's unfortunate though that I can't say the same thing about its sequel. Mega Man Zero Four leaves the Zero series ending on a very disappointing note. We're talking about a bad Mega Man game here, folks. Well, not that bad. It still exists, but it's pretty bad. So stay tuned for that review. Ugh.